into um, three sections. So the first section is how to set up your loop for success. If you do section one, if you if you do the three steps, A, B, and C, that I, I'm going to show you how to set up your loop for success, your paperwork will be successful. I can guarantee it. Easy if you follow those three steps. The second section that we teach on is on how to submit your loop for review. And then the third section is my favorite section, which is all the little tips and tricks uh, to help you navigate through that loop. So has anybody who's on the call, has any of you guys uh, used that loop before? Anybody used that loop before? Uh, no, so we got no, we got Nyana said yes. Okay, so Marjorie, no. So I have not. So I have two people that are uh, pretty novice and one that's uh, so perfect, awesome. All right, section one is how to set your loop up for success. And so before we start, I just wanna let you know that Stacy Alcorn, which is the CEO of Lair, she pays for the premium account brokerage account. Now, if you belong to the MLS, you get a basic watered down version, does not have the over 3000 forms that are in here, real estate forms. They're all broken down by state. So New Hampshire has its own forms, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Florida, we have everything in here broken down for you. And so uh, how do you know you're in the right account? Because you have to be invited into the brokerage account. So once you become a layer agent and we get all your paperwork, you'll get an email from me inviting you in and with an email that you have to log into. And you'll know you're in the brokerage account. If you see over on the left-hand side, it says premium. Okay, if you go over here and they say you have practice loops, if it ever asks you for money, you're not in the brokerage account because Stacy pays for this for you. So I just wanted to let you know, that's how you know you're in the right account. You're in the brokerage account. So you have to be invited in. So before we start our training, I wanted to let you know that 90, 95% of what you're going to do once you're in that loop is going to be on the right hand side of the screen. So, and I will point that out as we go along. So step one is to create the loop. So now here, this is my dashboard and these are all my loops. You can see them right here. These are all my created loops. So if you've ever been in real estate for any length of time, you used to come into the office and get a manila folder and you used to write on the outside the address. This is what this is like, okay? And once you click on it, then it's like opening up the folder and seeing your paperwork inside the folder. So we're going to create a loop, which is in essence, like going to the office and grabbing a manila folder and putting the address on the outside. So again, anything blue is interactive and you're on the right hand side. Remember, 95 percent of what you're going to do in that loop is going to be on the right hand side. You are going to hit add a loop here. If you're a listing agent, obviously, you're going to put the address in here. If you're a buyer agent you're gonna put the buyer's name here. So let's do a buyer. Today, I'm gonna to create a buyer folder. So we'll say we're gonna be working with Mr. and Mrs. Uh, John Smith. Okay, and now again, blue and on the right-hand corner, you are going to continue. Now here, you need to pick, you're at step two, you need to pick a template. Basically, it's saying, well, what are you going to act as? Are you going to act as a buyer agent or are you acting as a listing agent? What state are you in? Okay, so if you hit this drop down, it's going to give you all of your options. Uh, okay, Massachusetts listing, that's not what we're going to do. Massachusetts buyer, that's what we're going to do. But I want to show you something. If I try to hit this continue button without picking a template, it gives me this warning. What we're trying to do is put the correct paperwork that you are going to need to facilitate this transaction, either as the buyer agent or the listing agent. And so by that, you need to pick the correct template. And then for this training purpose, we're gonna be 10, we're a buyer agent. And now I am going to continue. Here, you can add a photo of your client if you want to, you can add a photo of the house, but you can skip this. 
So I'm just going to hit done. And now what it's doing is it's putting all of the paperwork that you would need as a buyer into the folder. So anything that's blue is interactive. So this is what, where are we here? We're doing a pre-offer because we do not have an offer for uh, Mr. and Mrs. John Smith yet. But if you wanted to put, maybe you want to put their sale price maximum, you could do that. Their maximum is going to be 600000 Okay. You could put that in there and then you can change it afterwards when you actually have a address and you know exactly how much they're spending. So what we're going to do is, so step one is create the loop. Congratulations. You have done step one. Now we're going to go into step two which is open up the loop and add the people. This is very important. Let's see, we got a chat here. Okay, so I'm sure you can get, yes, all of these trainings are in uh, the training at lair at agentservices.com, lairagentservices.com. That's where you can get a copy of this. Okay, so step two is add the people. So where do you add the people? This is very important. Do not skip this step. You're going to use this little slider here and you're going to go down to the people section. This is the people section right here. Okay, so now every time you create a loop, it's going to add you, but you need to give yourself a role. So I am going to pretend that I am the buyer agent. This is very important to assign the roles. Why? Because when you assign a role, all the forms that you have to sign as a buyer agent will put your name. Very, very important. Do not skip this. Now, we're going to obviously add Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but it's really going to be Mary Glavy because she helps me with my training. So I'm going to pretend that my buyer is Mary Glavy. I'm going to enter her uh, email address. And I'm going to give her the role. This is very important because everywhere where a buyer needs to sign, if you give her the role as the buyer, it will input her name there. Now, when I do that, this information comes up by the state of Ma uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Connecticut. We could get audited. And this information needs to be on file with the brokerage. So we are going to need your client's phone number. Just put the cell phone up here. Do not use down here. Just put the phone here. We are going to need where your client lives, okay? Now, I'm going to pretend that Mary is selling 23 Main Street. I mean, she lives at 23 Main Street. And, and so I'm going to put her down, and she lives in East Long Meadow. Actually, she lives in, I'm going to put Lemonster. And you have to set it. You got to do it separate like this. And I'm going to put her zip code, which I don't know Lemonster's zip code, but I'll just add East Long Meadow zip code. Okay, so I added this information. This is very important. Again, if we get audited, the auditors are going to ask for this information. Just put the phone number, even if it's uh, if it's um, if it's a cell phone number or if it's a landline, put it there. And you're going to add the person. Now, you're going to see that it says buyer here. And it has you as the buyer agent. So everywhere you need to sign, your, your buyer needs to sign, it will say Mary sign here. So this is very important. Also, I just want to let you know that uh, if you have two buyers, each person needs their own email. Nobody can share an email. So you can't share an email. So... I uh, just wanted to make that thing that every person you add in here does have to have their own email. So that's step two. So congratulations, you've already gone through step one and step two. You've created the loop and now you've added the people along with their roles. So step three is to come up here and fill out the paperwork. Now you'll see over here that these are required by the state. Uh, the affiliated business arrangement is required by LAIR, but these three are required by the state that we need to have on file. So therefore they say required over here. Now, inside every loop, you're gonna have folders. This is the buyer folder. And then down here, we have other important documents. What we have done at LAIR is we've tried to give you 99% of what you need for a 
transaction right here in this folder. You don't need to look anywhere else, but there might be that chance you may need one or two forms. So we made this other folder inside the loop. And this is where you can find all those things. But if you're like me and you don't want to, this is too much to look at. If you just click on that folder, it collapses it. And so now you're only working on this right here, which is in front of you. So I personally like that. So step three is to fill out the paperwork. All you have to do in order to fill out the paperwork, because you filled in the people section, it's going to say, hey, I recognize that Mary Glavy's the buyer. Do you want to autofill? And we're going to say yes. And if you scroll down here, it'll say Mary sign here. Now, dot loop uh, automatically defaults to two buyers and two sellers. If you don't have any of these, you can either click on them like that and just go over to assign here and assign it to nobody. And you can assign all of those to, nope, you don't want that. I want to assign to nobody. No one. Uh, let me see. Okay, I did that. Assign to no one. Uh, let's see. I don't know what happened here. Let me take a look. My assign to no one didn't uh, go in. But anyway, so that's how you do that. And I'll show you how to do it again. Sorry for the screen. So what you want to do is you want to save that. We're going to go over this again. Uh, we don't want to share it right now, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So we're just going to go, notice how it went from required to not submitted, which means you filled it out, but it's been not submitted. So let's go to the mandatory agency disclosure. Everybody knows this form. So in here, it's saying Mary is the buyer and you, I am the buyer agent and has my license number in there, and I'm going to autofill. And so what it's doing is now, because we use this form for both the so seller or the buyer, you do have to check this off. We can't check it off for you because it's the same form we use when you represent the seller and the buyer. So we're going to fill that in for you. And we checked off designated agent because if you uh, work for Lear, you are a designated agent. We're a designated agency, and so you're going to check off that you represent the buyer. Now, how to sign? Very easy. I'm in here as the agent, so if I just hover my cursor and I hit sign now, adopt and sign. Now, I have put that in there. It's got my license. I could say I'm a broker. Now, again, I wanted to go over this again. Mary is our buyer, so we're going to check off buyer. But again, like I said, it defaults to two buyers and two sellers. So just click on the one, if you only have one uh, person you're working on, click on the one you want to assign to no one. And that'll take the signature off. And then we're going to save that. Okay, so that's how easy that is. Uh, we're not going to share right now. So as a buyer agent, uh, you're going to need these two forms signed up front. So here's a question that we get. When should you create a loop? It The great thing about dot loop is it's the same question. It's the same answer for, uh, for either a buyer agent or a selling agent. You want to set up your loop uh, prior to meeting your first client because as a buyer agent, you're going to need mandatory agency disclosure signed before you go to the first property. If you're a listing agent, you're going to need to fill this out because there is paperwork that your client uh, is going to need to sign. So you might say, well, what if I don't get the listing? Well, look how prepared you will be if you have this all filled out. And if you really feel like you met with the listing agent and you really feel like they're going to sign with you, you could say, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, seller, I have prepared the paperwork. I can walk you through on how to sign it electronically if you like, if you think you would like to hire me. And so you can close the deal right there. So the more you have your paperwork prepared, the better you're going to look as an agent. So to answer that question, which is one of the questions we get quite often, is when should you create your loop? It is the same for an agent, listing agent, as well as a buyer agent. You want to set it, set it before your first meeting with your client. So I'm going to just pause right, nope, I'm not going to pause right here. I'm almost through section one. So I want to show you how to share these documents. Now, 
if I spilled this out and shared it when it asked me to share it, what was going to happen is our client was going to get three separate emails or two separate emails. The way I'm going to show you now, they're going to get one email with the forms in that one email. So that's why we didn't share it. We're going to share it all together. Now, if you filled out the paperwork and then you want to share, I'm going to start to click off. As soon as I click any one of these, you're going to see a big blue share on the right-hand side of the screen. So you're going to check that off. And I'm going to check because I want to send both of these documents to our buyer in one email. And so now I'm going to share it. Notice how it checked off Mary Glaby because we gave Mary Glaby the role as a buyer. And these are documents that a buyer has to sign. And it also automatically gave her the ability to sign. That's why adding the people and their role is so important. Then down here, you're going to add your little message. Okay, now before we share that document, I want to talk about this right here, attach PDF to email. I always, always suggest that agents check that off. What does that do? That gives your client two ways to view and sign the documents. They can view them electronically and sign electronically, or they can view it as a PDF read it, they can print it, have a cup of coffee, read the complete contract, then sign it, then scan it and upload it. They can read it, they can send it to their children, maybe they're elder and the, the older elderly and the children say, mom, don't sign anything until I read it. It's a way to forward that email to their attorneys or to their children to say, hey, could you read this and let me know if I can sign it. The great thing about that is they could forward to it. The children say, yeah, my read it. It's great. The lawyer said, yeah, you can sign that. It's just a standard form. They can go back in and sign it electronically using the dot loop uh, link, or they can just sign it, hard sign it and get it to you scan somehow. Most people know how to scan and upload documents. So I always tell agents to check this off. It just gives your client two ways of viewing the documents. Okay. So we're going to share that. And now it's waiting on others. So we're going to go back to done. Now you're going to notice here, <coughs> it says waiting on owners. So, and these are not submitted. So this is telling you that you filled this out and now you sent it to your client and you're waiting for them to sign it. Once Mary Glavy, our buyer, signs this, it's going to change and say sign now. So basically that's section one. So I want to just stop here in case anybody has any questions on section one, which is create the loop, then fill in the people section, and then fill out the forms and share. Uh, I want to just make one more note down here. A lot of people don't want to add the listing agent because they think that if they add them to the people section, they'll be able to see everything in their loop. That is not correct. Okay. No, you can add as many people down here. They're not going to be able to see anything in your loop unless you use the share button up here. Then you share with them. That's how they're going to see things in the loop. There is just one caveat to that. If you add a person and you add them to your team, which you should never do unless you're a team leader or you have a transaction coordinator. If you have a transaction coordinator, you can put them in here and you can give them the role as transaction coordinator, which there is one down here, right here. And you want to add them to the team. That will give the transaction coordinator the ability to see everything in your loop. And that's what you're paying them for anyways, is to get all your paperwork in order. So that is the only time you never want to check on my team ever, ever, ever. You never, your clients are never on your team. The other agents are never on the team. This is only if you have a transaction coordinator or you're a team leader and you want to be able to see all of the loops your team creates. Okay. So I wanted to just go over that real quick. So we're going to go into how do we submit a loop for review? So. Mr. and Mrs. Smith found a 
property that they put an ad, they put an offer in and it got accepted. Okay. So when should you submit a loop for review? That's a great question. And the answer is the same if you're a listing agent or buyer agent. You're going to want to submit your loop for review after you have uh, an offer fully executed, you have a purchase and sale fully executed, and we have all monies. So if you're a buyer agent, after you have a fully executed offer and your monies have been sent to the listing agent company, then you're going to want to submit for review. If you're a listing agent, you're going to want to do it after you receive all the monies according to the PNS, after you got a signed PNS and a signed offer. Why do we do that? You're saying it's not going to close for four weeks. Well, what that does is, is we have over 700 agents at Lair and we have a dot loop approving team. So that gives the dot loop team time to look over your loops to make sure that we have all of the paperwork that you need. And so uh, we do, that's why we request that you do it right after inspections, right after your PNS is signed and all monies are received. So another way that I can guarantee that the dot loop team is going to approve your loop is every single loop has this, this uh, document in it. It's called pending checklist. We have one for Massachusetts. We have one for Connecticut. We have one for Rhode Island. So what you want to do is before you submit for review, you're going to want to open this up because this is going to tell you exactly what the dot loop team is going to be looking for. So the dot loop team is going to look for a fully executed. This is very important, fully executed. They're going to need agency. They're going to need sign offer. Now, I know some people, the buyer agent signs a, the buyer signs an offer and then they go directly into purchase and sale i highly highly recommend that you get your offers fully executed okay you have to be able to show due diligence fiduciary duty duty to your client that you're protecting them and this is a way and and especially if their offer gets declined rejected you should definitely have the seller sign that they rejected the offer because you can show Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I am showing you that the listing agent did uh, show uh, your offer to their client because the client signed it. Purchase and sale. Now we usually always get a purchase and sale, but we don't always get these addendums. If anything has changed and an addendum is written, addendums are now part of this purchase and sale and they need to be fully executed. This is one of the big reasons why loops are not approved is addendums are not, uh, uh, they're not fully executed. Buyer agency contract in Massachusetts that is not required as of yet. I don't know in July if that's going to change. Buyer agent contract, if you do have your client fill one out, then it is required. Seller's disclosure of property, again, in Massachusetts, not required. But however, in Connecticut, New Hampshire, this is required document. Same thing in here, Connecticut, New Hampshire, this is also required document. Lead paint, we only need this if built prior to 1978. And then the affiliated business arrangement disclosure, that's a layer form that needs to be filled out. So let's just go over real quickly. If you're a listing agent, Agency disclosure, listing agreement, purchase and sale with all addendums, seller's description of property. If your seller filled it out, then you should actually put that, list that to the MLS. You should always, if a seller fills this out, remember you're protecting your seller, do your fiduciary duty and post that to the listing if your seller fills that out. Now, in the state of New Hampshire and Connecticut, this is a required document. Signed offer, lead paint also. If it's built prior to 1978, this needs to be filled out and the entire brochure should be posted to your MLS listing, not just the signature page. The entire brochure should be posted. Copies of deposit check and the affiliated business. If you check that you have all of these in there, then you're not gonna have a problem with submitting your loop for review. So I'm gonna show you how to submit your loop for review. Again, it's on the right-hand side, it's blue, it's an interactive field, and you're gonna submit uh, 
loop review. Now we're missing the property address here. We typed in where Mary Glavy lives, but we did not type in the property address these people are buying. So this is just a pop-up window, information window. This is not where you input the information, okay? I want to make that very clear. This is just an information pop-up window that needs to be filled out. And I'm going to show you where to fill it out. You're going to exit this. And under view details is where you input all of that information. So all loops should be submitted by street address. So this is where you're going to change it. We're going to say that Mr. and Mrs. Smith bought 143 Maple Street in East Long Meadow. And we're, we do ask that you put the entire address Okay, and if you hit save, you're gonna once I hit save, you're gonna see that this is gonna change to 143 Maple Street, but it still has Mr. and Mrs. Jones on here, John Smith. And so you can now search this loop by either the street address or your client's name. So that's how you do that. So we do ask that all loops are submitted by street address okay so i'm just letting you know that and then we needed to put down here if we scroll down we could put the address now you can search the mls here and it will give you the entire address on this one line unfortunately or fortunately it has to be broken down by um number it has to be broken by the number, the street name, the town, and the, the state, and the zip. So we are going to fill that out. This is 143 is the street number. It is Maple Street. You can skip unit. It's East Long Meadow. It's Massachusetts. And we're going to put the zip code in here. You also, we don't need the county, but you do need the MLS number. And you can also, if it's a non-MLS or FISBO, you can type that in here. But we are, by the state, we are required to have the year built of the house they're buying. So I am going to put 19, I'm going to put 1974. This will need lead paint. What you want to do is you want to save this. And now we're going to submit the loop for review. And now what it's saying, it's saying, okay, we have all the information that we need, but we need to know which of the two folders inside this loop would you like the dot loop team to review? We didn't use this folder. So we're just going to tell them we only want the buyer folder at a review and it's a buyer review. And if you're going to submit for review, there's some documents that need to be done. So these are required document. The offer is not in here. So I want to show you, say you have a handwritten offer. So what you're going to do is you're going to find that offer on your desktop. So I hit add a document. I'm going to browse my desktop and I am going to look for that offer. Here it is. We'll just pretend that that's the offer. So what you could do here is, this is a required document, but we'll say that this is a hand-signed offer. So we're going to just write signed offer, fully executed offer. What you could do is you can take the signed offer and drag it over where it's required. It's going to give you a warning that you're about to replace it. You say yes, and now it met that requirement, okay? Same thing with a purchase and sale. Maybe you have a purchase and sale. I'm going to go to my training file over here. Let me just go to my training file, training file right here. Here, we're going to say that this is a purchase and sale. So I'm going to show you how to do that again. We are going to add a document. I'm going to browse my computer and I am going to add this PDF. And I'm going to name this that this is, rename it. You're going to name this. We're going to pretend for training purposes that this is a fully executed purchase and sale. So what you want to do is you're going to take the 
fully executed purchase and sale. Now, if you use this and they signed everything electronically, you wouldn't have to do this. This is only if you have documents that were not signed electronically. You're going to just take that and drag it over where it's required. You're going to replace it. And now you're going to notice that all of these, the required went away and we're going to submit for review. So I'm going to hit submit for review. We're going to say we want the buyer folder. It's a buyer review and we're going to submit for review. So now that has gone to the dot loop team and you could tell because it's submitted. So why would this be, uh, how can you use this? This is very, if you have more than one transaction uh, in one month, it can get very confusing. And you're like, I don't remember if I submitted it for review. All you have to do is open it up. And if it says submitted, you did it. So I love this. Notice how Mary Glavy signed here too. So it went from not shared to waiting on others to sign. Okay. So that's how you submit a loop for review. And I'm just going to stop right here in case we have any questions. Does anybody have any questions on how to submit a loop for review? I'm just going to pause real quick, give people any time to put it in the chat. Um, I hope I made that very clear. Um, and again, this is being recorded, so you can go over it. So now I'm going to go into the third section of our training is all these tips and tricks. So I love this because this really helps you as an agent. Just get your loop and your paperwork uh, correct. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how to add documents to your loop. Now, if you hit this add document, again, it's on the right-hand side, it's blue. You have three options. You can upload documents as a interactive template, meaning that they can sign electronically. This is where we have over 3,000 forms. We have them all broken down by state, and I'm going to show you. So say you need an extension. Uh, you need, we'll say an extension. You're going to go into your templates. And if you scroll down here, this is where they all are. See how they're, here's all the Massachusetts forms. All the Mar, Mar forms are here. Here's New Hampshire forms. These are all Connecticut forms. These are all Rhode Island forms. These are Florida forms. So we're going to go into the Massachusetts layer form. And we are going to put, oh, I don't know, extension. Here it is, extension of time. Now, if you were, uh, you can type it in by the name or you could type it in by the MAR number if you knew it. Uh, you could search. So if you didn't know what it's it's under here in, just the less, the, the less you type in for search, the better off you're going to be because you have to uh, type in what we called it. So we're going to copy that into the loop. And now, so that's one way how to do it. So I just added a, a uh, interactive form that we can now fill out and send to our clients. Another way of doing it is you can browse your computer, which we just did. So these have to be PDFs, no photos. So if you're an agent taking photos of signed documents, that's really not the best practice. You are, remember, you're a professional. And... Uh, you should not take uh, you should not take photos of signed documents. It's just not professional. So in order to browse, you just browse your computer. You find where you downloaded them. Here's a property transfer that I downloaded. Being the buyer agent, you're probably going to get the uh, property disclosure on the listing. And so you downloaded it in here. So that's another way. And now I want to show you this way, which is my favorite way, which is every time you create a loop, uh, every loop has its own email. And so you could take a PDF that's been a, uh, sent to you in an email and directly drop that PDF in the email directly into this loop without making a duplicate loop. Now, let me explain that because what happens is you're a list agent and you're getting offers, multiple offers, right? And so they're sending them to you because a lot of people are using Dialoop. So they send them to you 
and a dot loop and offer and you open it up, you now just made another loop with the same name, but one's your loop and one is the uh, listing agent's loop. You only want to work on the loop that you make. You do not want to work on another person's loop, okay? So how do you avoid that? I'm going to show you. So I'm going to go to my training over here. We got an offer from Peter Marino right here. And so what I want to do is, well, I got kicked out of my email. Not sure why. Let me just connect here. Just going to connect back into my email. I got to go to my training. Hold on. Here's my training folder. Okay, so now you have a offer. You get notified on your phone. You got an offer from Pina Marino. Now I'm going to show you how to do it so you do not make duplicate loops. You're going to go to your loop first. You're going to open it up, okay? And then you're going to add a document and you're going to go to this email. You're going to copy this email, which will drop PDFs directly into this loop. Now you're going to go over to this email here, which has the offer, and you're going to forward this email from Peter Marino, and you're going to paste that link into here. And you're going to send that. What that's going to do is going to take this offer that's uh, attached as a PDF, and it's going to drop it directly into your loop into your loop, not somebody else's loop. And so we are going to just refresh the page here and you will see it. There it is. It dropped that PDF that was attached to the email directly into your loop. And now you can open it up and look at it. And there it is, okay? So I just wanted to show you that. That is very important tool. This is on how to add documents to folders. Now, uh, I don't see any questions. I want to show you how to add a folder. Why would you add a folder, a different folder? Well, maybe you're the list agent and you have buyers that might be very interested in this house. So you're going to hit the blue add a folder. And if you come over to these three dots again on the right hand side and you rename it, you're going to put your cursor here and highlight it and you're going to write buyer folder. And now you have a click off the page. Now you have a, oh, okay, we pretend. I'm sorry, I forgot we were buyers here. This would be a list folder and now you made a buyer folder. And so maybe you want to put an offer in here. So you're going to go and you're going to add the master one. You're going to put contract to offer. Contract to purchase, here it is. And you're going to check that off and you're going to copy that into your offer, your buyer folder. We can change this if you want to. Again, three dots, just put rename and we can make this the listing folder. So now I have a buyer folder and a listing folder in the loop, okay? And so you could create as much folders as you want. If you want to put a folder and you want to name this backup folders, backup offer folders. If you just make sure you click off the screen, you could take Peter's offer. Say, okay, we didn't take Peter's offer. We're going to put it in the backup folder offer. Okay. So I just love this. I just want to definitely show you how to add folders and how to add documents I want to show you something. I want to go to this lead paint because this lead paint, here's the entire brochure. This is probably how you would get it as a buyer agent. We are going to go to the bottom of the page here. Now, your buyer has to sign this. The seller says there's no knowledge and the seller has no reports. As an agent, you should never, 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 never have your buyer sign a lead paint that the seller hasn't checked off up here first, okay? Now, we got this, that the agent signed it. They're providing this to you, the buyer agent, and now your client needs to fill this out. How do you do this? You're going to go over to add, and you're going to add a initial. Now, notice when I add this initial box, 
I can't tell if that's on D or E, okay? And this is 99% of the reason why loops are not approved is because we can't read the lead paint. So what I want you to do is you're going to drop the initial. You're going to take it to you see these two arrows. You hold your cursor and drag to fit that right in there. And then we're going to assign that to our client. Now I'm going to do that again. You're going to add. You're going to add an initial. You're going to put it where you want it. And then you're going to take your cursor to you get the little arrow on both sides. And you're going to hold and drag. Hold and drag and then assign it to who you want to sign. I'm going to do it one more time because, again, this is the biggest reason that loops are uh, not approved. So I'm going to wait till I get that two arrow, drag, then assign it to your client. Now, you as an agent are going to have to uh, initial. So you're going to have to put your initials here and then you're going to assign it to yourself and assign it to me to sign. I can sign now, just like that. Now, if you scroll down, you do have to add a signature purchaser right here, and we're going to sign it. Okay. Uh, please make sure that the entire address is down here. If they had just 28 B Street without Drake at Massachusetts, that is an infraction on this form, $10,000 fee for that. If you don't have these checked off, that's another 10,000 fee. If you don't have these checked off, it's a $10,000 fee. So you're going to want to add a checkbox because you need to check, is your client taking this? You can make it bigger. You can move it. I can make that bigger and I can check it off like that. Okay. So, of course, you want to save. So, I wanted to show you that, how to resize, add signatures, and resize everything. So, do we have any questions on that? So, I just want to pause right there. I don't see any questions. And so, that's one of the biggest things I like to show everybody is, uh, you know, how to add documents, how to add folders, Uh what I want to do is inside, I want to go over this activity log because what this does is when you have a loop open like this and you go into the activity log, now this is why attorneys' offices are accepting electrical electronic signatures because of this timestamp. It shows everything I did in this loop, absolutely everything. It also shows when Mary Glavy signed right here the document. So it gives a time stamp and date of everything that's in here. So say you sent a the listing agent an extension. You show that it was uh, sent, but you didn't get it back. You could go in that to see if they even looked at it. It'll say that they viewed it. So I love this activity log. Now, if you go out to your dashboard here, there's also an activity log here that will give you everything that you've ever done on any any um, loop. So this one is saying, this is everything that was done today on 143 Maple Street. But if I scroll down, it's going to give me another address. Here's what we did when we created the loop. We filled it out. Here's yesterday, we did this, we added these. So it breaks it all down for you. So I like to tell you about the activity log. Now, this is your dashboard, and I want to give you, you have three options of how your dashboard can look. I personally like this view. I think it's a better view. But you have, this is a grid view. Then you can choose from a list view, which is this one, or you could do a compact view. That is totally up to you how you like it. I personally like the grid view. Also, you have filters. You can filter uh, what you're seeing on your dashboard. So right now I have two filters. So I am seeing only active listings and under agreements. That is all I am seeing in here. You will not see, uh, you will not see anything. You're not going to see sold. You're not going to see terminated. You're not going to see archived. Notice how all I'm seeing are my active and under agreement. That is all I'm seeing. And it's going to keep going because this is my training. So now it's stopped. 
All these are our every loop that I have made that has either a status of under agreement or active. Now, at the end of the year, you may want to send a holiday greeting to everybody you sold to. So you're going to hit the sold and you're going to uncheck active and under agreement and you're going to hit apply. And now it's only going to show you your solds in here. Okay. So the status is very important that you fill that out. Always update the status on all of your um, loops. Now, um, you can also sort by creation date, or you can sort by last updated, transaction price, list date, expiration date, closing date, submit for review date, or contract date. I personally like by the date that I sorted it or that I created it. So you're going to see that it has all my souls. This was the last one. Okay, so it's giving me the most recent to the oldest. So if I go back and just do our uh, pre-off, pre-listing, because that's what our status was, and we apply that, we're going to see the one that we created. You should see the one we created today. Let me take a look here. Maybe I changed, oh, I must have changed it to active or under agreement. And I don't know why it's not showing me. Let's see. Let's click them all because I don't know. It's probably not private listing. Let me take a look here. Uh, let me see. So I have all these filters on. So it's going to give you that. So I have to look this up. Let's look up Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, so let's see. We said that the address was 145. Let me do this. 145 Maple. Okay, so it must be my filters. I, I must have, I'm hiding my archives. Let's do all because I want to find the one that we created today. And I don't know where it is. I don't know why I can't find this. All right, let me do this. I'll just check everything. Something, I must have did something wrong. So we're just going to check all of these filters so that we can see. Maximum nine, okay. Let me see what we got here. Here it is. So I had this as pre-offer. Notice that's why I couldn't find it. When I went to my filters, I didn't have pre-offer checked. So that's a really good reason why you have to pay attention to the status. Because if you can't find a loop that you know you made, check your filters. Always check your filters first. I like to uncheck everything, but you know... This way it's showing me everything that's in there. But you may not be like me and you may want to just see the things you're working on. And so uh, just check your filters. If you if you know you created a loop and you can't find it, check your filters. So I just wanted to say that. Uh, one of the things I wanted to double check too, this is a really cool tool. Sometimes underwriting will call you and they need signature verification. How do you get that in that loop? So if you go over here to the documents that were signed by our client and you hit these three dots again on the right hand side of the screen, one of the options here is signature verification. And what it's going to do, it, you can view the document that they signed so then you can download it and send it to whoever needs to or you can share it to whoever needs to be shared with or you can print it. So I just wanted to show you how that because sometimes underwriting will ask you for signature verification. Another way of finding that is if you open up the document and right here, it's going to give you that loop signature verification. And again, it's going to give you options. You can view the document this way. You can share it with anybody or you can print it and you can get it to whoever needs it. So that's really important. I like to show that because Sometimes people say, 
uh, underwriting will say they need to see a fully executed offer, you know, because the PNS is taking too long and the bank wants to work on your loan. And so they say, we need a, we need proof that you, it's fully executed. So I wanted to show you that as well. So uh, uh, that is a lot of what we go over. Um, I will pause here to see if anybody has any questions. Just use the chat. Um, again, this is like having your folder open and you can see everything that's in your folder. And when you go back to your dashboard here, this is like having all of your folders closed and you're just seeing the address. And so I uh, want to go in there. I just showed you, uh, this is how you can upload. Here's how you can upload a picture of the house. I like uploading pictures of the house. Sometimes when you're a buyer agent and you see so many uh, houses, you can't remember which one they actually ended up buying. So that's a good way of doing that. I can show you how to do it. It's very easy. Uh, you're just going to add a photo under view details, I believe. Let me see. I think we could do it under view details. So under view details, this is where you have all of your client's information. If you have to upload it, this is where you're going to input the year built or the MLS number. These are required by the state, actually. So you got to make sure that you put that in there. I thought it was in here where we could uh, add the photo. I know you can. Oh, here it is. Add a photo. And so we're just going to add a picture. I just use my pictures. I'll just use the eagle. I like the eagle. And there it is. Very easy. So you can add it when you're creating it, or you can go under view details and add it there. Again, I just want to stop and pause that this is where you're going to change the name from your client's name to the street address. Okay. You can get rid of Mr. and Mrs. If you want to, you just have to click and you just use your arrows to get where you want. And you can get rid of Mr. and Mrs. You can get rid of that. And then just make sure you save everything and it'll change it. John Smith. Uh, so we do have one chat. Let me see. Let me see. Do we just go to the layer agent to get access or would you send an invitation as you mentioned earlier? Uh, as an agent, you got invited to, if I'm uh, understanding your question, you get invited to uh, the layer brokerage and you have to sign in with the email that we assign you, okay? So I hopefully hopefully uh, that answers your question. You only share, you never have to send an invite to your client. You only share documents with your client. So I wanted to, this is there, I did forget this. So right here is where the uh, built-in email system is right here. So uh, this is how the dot loop team is going to talk to you is through the email system. So let's just add, I wanna to go to the people section in here and let's just add, we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna add an agent, okay? I just wanna show you something. Uh, let me take a look here. And I add an agent and we're gonna make him the listing agent, okay? And we're adding the person. Now, when I go here, when you go to this built-in email system, everybody that you have in the people section is going to show up here, okay? So whoever you want to send an email to, just click on their name. It's going to be in the black. And then you're going to just type in, you're just going to type in the message. And then you're going to send it, okay? So that's only going to Mary, okay? Any And so there's nothing here that we sent to the buyer agent, but maybe the listing agent, you needed to send the fully executed extension or whatever. So I wanted to show you, and this is how the dot loop team is going to talk to you. They are going to talk to you through the mail system. So I the built in mailing system. So I just wanted to make sure you knew where that was. It's right here. Again, it's blue and it's on the right hand side. 
and that gives you all of the, and it will list everything. So you can scroll back if the .loop team is asking for a form and everything. This is how they're going to communicate with you through this email system that's built into .loop. That's why I like .loop because if you go on vacation and you have everything in your .loop, you can pretty much just log into one thing. You never have to log into your emails or anything like that. If you just log into that loop and you have everything in here, you have all the people listed in the people section and all of your documents in here. If somebody needs something, all you have to know is your password and log into that loop and pretty much 99% of what you need is here. There's commission statements in here that you can fill out and send right here. This is a big one. Uh, you need to send a commission statement. Here's the commission statement. Lair has filled it in. You just have to fill in the blanks. That's it. So a lot of that's one document I like to tell people that's in there because a lot of people do send the listing agent uh, their commission, which you should. Uh, if I was a buyer agent, I would send the listing agent my commission. Uh, if you're a listing agent, you're going to need to send a commission statement to the attorney. Listing attorney. So I just wanted to go over that. Uh, we're pretty much running down. I have one minute left. I just want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you, George. Thank you, Marjorie. Thank you, Mary, uh, for attending. Mary's always my resident buyer or seller. I want to thank her and reach out to her uh, very much. Uh, George and Marjorie, if you have any questions once you start using that loop, happy agent at Lair Realty is the place to go. They will assign your question to me. I will then either reach out or answer your uh, question through an email. I try to reach out to walk people through it. I had somebody today who had listing a property who had six sellers and she needed to know how to add signatures to these documents, which I had her go to her computer, stand behind her computer, and I walked her through everything. Uh, thank you, George. I'm glad it was informative to you. Hey, if you guys really enjoyed this, please send Happy Agent at Leia Realty a email just saying, I just took that loop training I, with Lisa. I thought it was awesome. Or maybe there was something that you think we could have done better. We want to hear from you. So Happy Agent at Leia Realty Partners is uh, where to go. Uh, to do anything. If you would like to send a comment, I really would appreciate that. That would be great. Again, I am teaching this again, May 21st. I'm only teaching it once in May. I was teaching it, usually teach it twice in a month, but just to let you know, again, happy agent at layerrealty.com. Uh, until we meet again, happy looping, and we'll talk soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you.